Hi again, indie game fans. Welcome back to I Dream of Indie. This is Old Gamer Joe. I'm here with another review today as we look at Nine Witches Family Disruption on the Steam PC platform. It's also going to be available on the Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4 for the price of $19.99. This one comes from developer Indisruption and publisher Blowfish Studios. Nine Witches weaves a pretty interesting and often hilarious tale taking place during World War II when the Occult 55, a rebel force, decides to turn the tides of war in their favor by unleashing an evil curse. It's up to wheelchair-bound Alexei Krakowicz and scientist Akiro Kagasawa to head off to Norway and save the world from evil. While it might all sound a little bit dark and serious, this game's actually really hilarious. I was laughing my butt off the entire time. There's some below the belt humor written in here as well, but it's written in a way that's quite entertaining. Definitely reminded me a lot of the early point and click adventure games that were humorous, like say Monkey Island, those Tim Schafer games of the past. In terms of storytelling, Nine Witches rarely fails to entertain. That said, you do have to have a little bit of a tolerance for the occasional dick and fart joke here, so if that's not your thing, you might roll your eyes a few times during the game, but me personally, I'm a little bit on the immature side and I was laughing. Humor aside, how does Nine Witches Family Disruption actually play? Well, a lot like those aforementioned games. You have point and click style gameplay here, but you actually do have full control over both characters. And it's interesting because you can actually switch between both characters as well, and they both have unique abilities that play off of one another. Krakowitz, for example, can actually eject his soul from his body and communicate with the dead that still linger around this world. He's also able to get into doors that might be locked and kind of peek his way around. Though he can't actually grab anything, he can only communicate with the dead. But it does give you an idea of what's going on in a locked area that you might then need Akiro to access, as Akiro can explore areas and pick up items that Krakowitz can't. The dual character mechanic is actually quite entertaining. I enjoyed switching between the characters on the fly, and I also liked switching between the spirit world and the real world to solve different puzzles. Most of which are pretty logical, though honestly, Honestly, I did get stuck a few times, and because this is a pre-release build, well, there's no strategy guides, you're forced to tough it out. Thankfully though, the solutions for the most part are pretty manageable, I was pulling my hair out a few times, but that won't really be a problem for most of you, as you can probably just hop onto YouTube and find the solutions if you're really that stuck. I didn't have that luxury though, but it was kind of refreshing to be honest with you. So while you won't actually be pointing and clicking in Nine Witches, it's all mapped out on your controller quite conveniently. I didn't have any frustrations with the overall control scheme whatsoever, and solving puzzles was a breeze once you figured out the solution. Again, it's all about brain power here. You of course will be interacting with a lot of different characters, and you can go through some dialogue branches as well, most of which are hilarious, and you'll need to pick up items that are scattered across the different areas that you'll explore. Switching between the two different characters is as simple as hitting the right trigger if you're using an Xbox controller, and on the whole, I really felt like the control scheme worked quite well. I didn't have any frustrations with it whatsoever. Getting around the maps is a breeze, it's fast, it's fluid, it works effectively, and I didn't miss the mouse and keyboard at all. So regardless of whether you're trying to round up chickens for a depressed old man, or steal tips from the bartender when he's not looking, it's all hilarious, it's all a lot of fun, and it's all easy for anyone to play and enjoy. Graphically, Nine Witches has its charms. I will say it's maybe a little bit over-pixelated, if I'm being honest with you. And this comes from someone who, as you may or may not know, loves pixel graphics, but they may have gone a step too far here. Things can look a bit blocky, particularly when you're zoomed out on the wider maps of this game. I think the characters in World are brimming with personality, but because it does get a little bit too pixelated, you don't make out some of the finer details. But that said, I still enjoyed this world. I enjoyed the different settings that you'll explore. It's a short game only clocking in at six hours so there's not a ton of different environments but on the whole I was a little bit mixed on the art style on one hand I think the pixelated look works well in theory but is just a little bit too zoomed in and overly pixelated. I do have to say that the sound effects in this one are also really quite excellent. They're very practical sounding, if that makes sense. Very realistic, given the cartoony nature of this game. And it kind of works. It adds to the humor and the flair of the game. The soundtrack itself is nothing memorable. It didn't really stand out to me, but it didn't offend me in any way whatsoever. But I did have to tip my hat to those very realistic, silly sounding effects, including the fart sounds, of course. Those are fantastic. I wonder who had to hold the mic for those. Overall, while the game is a little bit blocky looking, I was still entertained by the character animations and the looks of the world, and I liked the sound effects quite a bit. 
All in all, I was quite amused by Nine Witches Family Disruption. It did have me laughing, which is nice. I could have used a good laugh, and it came at the right moment for me. I like the setting of this game. I think the story is really well written. I think the gameplay works surprisingly well, considering that it's built around the controller, and yet it has so much of what makes point-and-click adventure games memorable. The puzzles aren't overly frustrating, but they can still challenge you, and you might get irritated at the fact that you miss a little bit of a detail, it might set you back an hour or two. That can be a bit annoying, but on the whole, I did have a good time with this one. It had me laughing, and that's really all I can ask for. <laughs> So what do you think? Will you be checking out Nine Witches Family Disruption? Let us know down in the comments section below. If you have enjoyed our video coverage today, consider hitting that subscribe button. It helps us to bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming. There are so many ways to support I Dream of Indie right down in the description box below. You can become a channel member or even check out our merchandise store. However you end up supporting us, it means the world. We thank you so much.